2022 is a pretty big year for Football Manager. For the first time ever, the game is available on Xbox Game Pass. Day one, come November 9th, you can play Football Manager. But there's two versions you can play. Yeah, that's right. There is the Xbox edition of Football Manager and there is the PC edition of Football Manager. Both are available on Game Pass. In this video today, I'm going to show you the key differences between the two versions so you can know which is the one that you should be playing come November 9th. Whether you're an experienced Football Manager player or maybe you're just delving into the game for the first time, I hope this video is useful. And well, without further ado, let's get into this. So just one thing to be aware of before we get into the video, I'm not covering new features in FM22 here. Um, I will have a video of my first hands-on experience with the FM22 Xbox edition here on the channel. And if you want to see my favorite new features of the game, you can check out a video of my top 10 features. I'll put a YouTube card thing in the top corner. Um, unless otherwise mentioned, you can assume that the stuff mentioned in that video is also present in the Xbox version of the game. So perhaps the most important difference between the two versions of the games is the ecosystems they exist in. If you're playing the Xbox edition of FM22, you are going to be able to play with your friends who also play the Xbox edition, be that on PC or on console. If you're playing the FM22 PC version, the regular version of the game, um, you are going to be able to play with your friends who maybe have the game on Steam, on Epic Games, and uh, these two ecosystems are split down the middle. You cannot play... The Xbox edition on Xbox with a friend on Steam, that that is, is different. Now, I realize for some people, often what's going to influence your decision is what your friends are playing. Um, so a couple of other aspects to be aware of, I guess, when it comes to the Xbox version of the game, because you're within the Xbox ecosystem, you get access to stuff like Xbox Play Anywhere. Um, that means that you can play on your mobile phone if you want, synced to your console. It also means that if you play FM22 Xbox Edition on your Windows 10 or 11 PC and then you save the game, it automatically syncs that data with your console. So if you then move into the living room, you can load up the game and simply load up the save game you were just playing. And it's all a really nice, seamless experience. One other aspect to be aware of with the Xbox version of the game is that you have access to xCloud. Now, for people who don't know what xCloud is, essentially it allows you to tap into Microsoft servers and play Xbox One games and Xbox Series S and X games uh, remotely without even owning a console. So if you have Game Pass, you could get your tablet out and you don't have to own an Xbox console and you can play the Xbox edition of it streamed to the tablet over the internet. It's new technology. I feel like it's only just catching on and it's not available everywhere in the world. But if you're maybe into your cloud gaming, um, maybe you're someone who used to play on Stadia um, with the older Football Manager FM20, that's something certainly to be aware of. It is worth noting that the regular version of Football Manager 2022 does have cloud saving, but from my own personal experience with FM21, it is nowhere near as seamless as it is with the Xbox edition of the game. Another big difference is the user interface. If you play on console, you are able to use a controller or a mouse. If you're playing on PC, um, this year for the first time ever, there is controller support for both the Xbox edition and the PC version, but by comparison to the console version, it's nowhere near as seamless, it's nowhere near as simple to use and uh, just good, I suppose, as a user experience. The Xbox version of the game with a controller certainly takes a little bit of getting used to, but if you have accessibility needs, it's a great alternative. It's also worth noting that with the console, you can plug a keyboard and mouse into, say, an Xbox Series S, and I do this myself, and just play the game on your TV uh, with a mouse, um, like you would the PC version of the game. For me, that is a really good addition, especially as someone who doesn't do a whole lot of gaming on a controller, and that is worth being aware of. Just at the halfway point in this video, I want to say if you're enjoying things, do drop a like on it. It helps feed the YouTube algorithm, ensures that other people looking for similar content to this can discover the channel. And maybe if you are one of those people who's just discovered the channel, well, welcome. If you want to see more content like this for Football Manager, make sure to get subscribed. We are currently on the road to 150,000. I would like to hit that number of subscribers by the end of the year. It's very ambitious. If you want to help us on that quest, drop a sub. I promise you won't regret it. And uh, let's get back into the video, shall we? Now, when it comes to the number of leagues and nations you can load, there are restrictions on the Xbox version, 
that don't exist with the PC version. With the PC version, you can load any of the 120 plus leagues that exist within Football Manager. If you're playing on Xbox One, you are limited to five nations that you can load as playable. If you're playing on Xbox Series S, X or on a Windows 10 or 11 machine, with the Xbox version, you can have 10 nations selected. Perhaps the biggest difference between the Xbox version and the regular version of FM22 is the actual gameplay and how it's streamlined for a console experience. Um, with the Xbox version of the game, stuff like team talks are removed from the game, interactions and press uh, conferences are massively, massively streamlined and cut down to the point where they don't eat into the game in the same way they do on the PC version. Uh, if you're coming from a PC background of Football Manager into the Xbox version, you'll probably notice stuff missing that maybe you'd like to use. If you're someone who's never played Football Manager before, to be honest, just not having that extra bloat is quite nice, especially if you're looking to get through seasons a little bit more quickly. Um, stuff like training being not quite as much in depth is a nice thing. It has depth to it, let's be clear here, but versus the PC version, it is that little bit more simple. But to be honest, when you're sat down playing on a sofa, I think it's quite nice that you can get through a season significantly quicker. And another thing that ties into that is the Xbox edition in the base version of the game comes with an instant result button. Now you can mod this into the PC version of FM22 using a custom skin, but essentially what this means is on a match day, you can click a button, your assistant takes the match, controls the game, uses your tactics, and then the result is instantly provided. If you're someone who wants to rattle through seasons quickly, maybe that's another reason to go with the Xbox version of the game. So one feature that is exclusive and new to FM22 on Xbox is the News Effects feature. Essentially, when you have certain interactions in the game, the impact of that is explained in layman's terms to you, which will hopefully make it easier to manage morale. Perhaps the biggest difference between the two versions of the game is the lack of mod ability. This is a big factor for a lot of people. With the PC version of Football Manager, you can download real name fixes to get the correct competition names. You can download logo packs and face packs and graphics add-ons that really allow you to bring to life the game. You get stuff like custom skins, which again, really allow you to tailor the appearance of your Football Manager experience to yourself. That doesn't exist in the same way on the Xbox version of the game, to the extent where you can't load up custom databases that add in new leagues and lower leagues of England. Additionally, the in-game editor is not available on the Xbox version of the game, neither is the pre-game database editor. Uh, this can be used to update transfers to add in custom playable leagues, as I already mentioned. Um, but when it comes to the in-game editor, for example, you pay, I think, four or five pounds for the PC version, and you can edit transfer budgets, move players around, change nationalities of players, all kinds of weird and wonderful stuff. The Xbox edition doesn't have that. What it does have is unlockables that function as microtransactions. And from a value proposition, they're very expensive versus the single fee that you pay for the in-game editor. Now, I know for some people, they're not going to use the microtransactions anyway, but it's just worth being aware of, I suppose, that when it comes to unlockables on the Xbox version, they exist, they cost money, they are completely optional, um, but they do not function anywhere near as well or offer the same kind of versatility, I suppose, as the in-game editor does on the PC version of the game. I think for me, ultimately, it comes down to what you want from your Football Manager experience. If you're a first-time player and you own an Xbox console, I think the Xbox edition of the game is great for you to get to grips with the game. As I said, it's designed in a streamlined manner that allows you to get through the game quicker, learn the ropes a little bit more. There's way less to it, which I think can really make onboarding yourself to Football Manager for the first time much easier. However, if you're coming from a background of having played the PC version of the game, you might feel like there are key bits that are missing from the game that you wish um, were there in the Xbox edition that are present in the PC version of the game. I think the most important thing to realise here is that there isn't really a better version. It entirely comes down to your user case, what your friends are playing. I know that the Xbox version of the game is really popular for multiplayer. Last year it had a couple of issues. I believe a lot of them have been worked out. And of course, both versions of the game do get access to network games and the multiplayer stuff, but you are limited in terms of you can only play with people who are on the same version of the game as you, be that the Xbox edition of the game or the regular PC version of FM22.
So there you have it. Those are the key differences between the two games this year. I think a lot of it comes down to personal preference and how you intend to play the game. I think the Xbox ecosystem is a really cool place to go to. And with the Xbox Play Anywhere feature, the ability to switch between PC and console is really nice. On the flip side, if you want to play with your friends on, say, Steam or Epic, if you want to have a bit more freedom to mod the game, I think that is probably the better version to go down, especially if you've perhaps played the game on PC before. As I mentioned earlier in today's video, we are currently on the road to 150,000 subscribers. If you want to help me try and get there before the end of the year, make sure to be subscribed. We have a whole host of other Football Manager content dropping here on this channel, including a first look at the Xbox edition of Football Manager on both console and PC using a controller and mouse. If you want to see more Football Manager content, there is going to be a lot of guides dropping in the next couple of weeks now that we're in the full fat launch window of Football Manager. I hope to see you guys on a future video and until next time, take care. Thank you for watching. It is me, Jack, and I will talk to you guys in a bit. I'm out.